definitely embrace that, um, and they're and they're excited about it. Let's get into the guts of this team. There's a lot to talk about, and it starts with uh, your quarterback yeah. uh, and your nephew Isaiah Marshall, the commit to Kansas, uh, who we'll have on our our ne- next segment here on the Prep Pod. Uh, he's with us here today. Um, what a great place to start. Uh, what an offense, mm-hmm. I guess, when you first look at your team and the weapons that Isaiah has uh, in the backfield and also uh, out wide with the receivers. I mean, it's an electric offense uh, littered with Division One players and talented young men. So let's start first with your offense and uh, how just elated you must be to have it coming into the season. Yeah, um, <clears throat> this offense, again, they, they've been playing together for a while. Isaiah's been starting as a freshman. Um, Tashi Brace, his receiver, has been on varsity since a freshman. Um, you know, we've got Savi Bowman. We've got Jawan Jarrett. I mean, his weapons are, are endless. Um, we've got running backs in Davier Burt, Royce Liggins, uh, Matthias Davis, um, Dorian Freeman. So we have four senior running backs um, mm-hmm. that are all – pushing 200 pounds or plus. So, you know, for us, it's, it's definitely a blessing. Um, we did graduate three of our offensive linemen from last year. Um, both our tackles are gone. One's going to Grand Valley. The other's going to Central State. Um, and they'll be replaced by two, six, five, um, one 2024 and the other's 2026. Um, so again, they got some big shoes to fill up front. Um, but, but so far, you know, I like the progress that they've made. Um, but no, the offense, man, they their their gel and, and their chemistry is amazing, right? And that's what makes them so good. Um, it's almost like Isaiah knows exactly where his guys are gonna be when they're supposed to be there. He trusts them and they trust him. And you know that you know in, in football, that chemistry is very important. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can just tell that these kids spend a lot of time together, you know, on and off the field. So the, the, a lot of those players, uh, you know, that the have the offers on your team and whatnot, a lot of them seem to be playing on the outside or receiver or slot area. You, there's got to be some unselfishness that comes with, you know, for the, from them that you guys are able to spread the ball around and they have to do their job when they're not getting the ball. So, I mean, can you highlight that on yeah. how those kids have played unselfishly throughout your tenure there? And it's funny, that was the main topic uh, of our camp, our tour days. So for the, this uh, you know past week, our main thing was selflessness. Um, and you have to be selfless in order to play football at South at Ante because we're going to have guys that can play, and there's one football, right? Um, we're going to try our best to spread the love, but we're also going to do what the team needs first. So if we're playing an opponent who keeps giving us this or whatever that may be, mm-hmm. you know, they got, they're, they're running, you know, whatever, where they got seven DBs out there because they're afraid of our pass, we're going to run the ball, and we may not throw the ball one time. And if they load the box for our run, we're going to throw the ball. And we may not run the ball. one right? We're, we're going to take – and you have to be okay with that. You have to be okay with blocking. You have to be okay with catching the ball. You have to be okay with celebrating your teammates' victories. Um, and But I will say, you know, last year and carrying over to this year so far, all the signs that I've seen, I, I have a bunch of selfless guys. Um, these guys are, are willing to do whatever it takes for one another, and I, and I love it. So out of those guys on the outside, who's the best blocker? Man, that's tough. They're all good. I'm going to be honest oh, with you. Oh, come they're, on. You got to pick one, they're, coach. They're, they're all good. <laughs> they're all good, but I will say I'm the most impressed um, with Jawan Jarrett when he blocks because he's the smallest one. Nice. Right? Does and they're beefy receivers. Like, you've yeah, got thick yeah. receivers. It's yeah. not – these aren't, uh, you know, bean poles out there. No, no doubt. You've yeah. got some guys that are put together at the receiver position, which yeah. probably gives you a little bit of an advantage, not just blocking, but, mm-hmm. you know, you want to do some things, bring them down in the box. and Yeah. I mean, that's got to just add to Rich Pop's yeah. toy box. Yeah, absolutely. Our, our strength conditioning coach, man, the the way our boys look today compared to last year, um, you know, you can tell that our strength conditioning coach, James Cooks, has done a phenomenal job. Um, they've been in the weight room again the entire offseason, um, and they've put on some of them 8 to 10 pounds of muscle, which may not sound like a lot, but it is a lot, you know, when you think about, the areas and, and where they put that muscle on at, um, and, and it showed in, in a camp. 